Now, a bit of a extra surprise for the decoded main stage. We originally weren't going to include a lightning pitch on the main stage because it's a very short format and generally projects that are in very, very early stages of development, if they're in development stage at all. Um, but when we heard Delhi discussing his vision for auto Automata, we thought it worthy of the main stage. Uh, Automata Network is a decentralized service protocol that provides middleware-like privacy services for dApps on Polkadot to achieve privacy, high assurance, and frictionless computation, offering features like anti-front running and anonymous voting. Delhi, thank you for joining us. It's quite late for you. We really greatly appreciate you uh, being with us here today at, uh, at Decoded. Hi, uh, thanks for having me here. I'm happy to uh, just join the Decoded event. Um, hi guys, uh, I'm the co-founder of Automata Network. I'm so happy to speak here and share our, our thoughts on how we can bring privacy to the entire Web3. Our team is based in Singapore and we have team members who previously worked at Zilliqa, Longhash, and National University of Singapore. We are building a decentralized service protocol using Substrate. And our goal is to create privacy middlewares for dApps on multiple platforms, including Polkadot, Ethereum, and many others. Uh, so in the past several months, we have seen that Ethereum is turning into a dark forest. If you are a DeFi user, uh, whether you realize or not, uh, you are already the victim of MEV or minor extractable value. MEV already has impact on users, and we will talk more about it later. The scary thing is uh, what happened on Ethereum will also happen on other public chains too, because for most platforms, privacy is not a first-class citizen since day one. But this is not a blame. We understand that it's a trade-off of being a public and secure blockchain, but the cost of not having privacy is just too high. According to some estimation, the total extract MEV has reached over 500 million. There are many research reasons behind, but information leakage is certainly one of them. So user expectation is a transaction that carries sensitive trade but should not be revealed to anyone before it gets confirmed or executed. But in reality on blockchain, the transaction is exposed too early to the wrong party in many places. Uh, for example, public mempool allows anyone in the world to see your unconfirmed transactions, and miners can see everything before the next block is mined. And combining this advantage with the superpower of uh, deciding the transaction ordering, miners can easily extract profit from users. And remember that MEV is not only happening on POW or POS chains in layer one, uh, layer two solutions also have the same issue. So public chain has transparency, but there's also dark side of it. If you are a crypto user, your on-chain activity is exposed, including voting, lending, swapping, and so on. You may have multiple wallets, but if you have transactions between them, uh, they will be linked forever. And if you have ever post your wallet address on Twitter or other platforms, your off-chain identity is now permanently linked to all your crypto activities. The more you use crypto, the more you are exposing unless you start over from a fresh wallet, but it only takes one careless move to get it exposed again. Now we move our focus off chain and take a look at API services. Many will think of API services as free launch, but nothing is truly free. Everyday users and developers send billions of API calls to all kinds of API services. They are either hosted by third parties or backed by unknown nodes. You can't imagine that they are already collecting, studying, and extracting information from the user queries. They can get information about user profile and user interest, such as the new listing, new strategy, and new trends. So the truth is, these services are not free, and we are the product. Automata is trying to save the platforms that were in the dark forest. We protect user privacy by providing safe rooms to perform the transactions and process user information privately. These safe rooms are built with trusted hardware technology like Intel SGX and algorithms that conceal user activity, which is oblivious RAM or ORAM. One important property we provide is even the hosting nodes are not able to see the content inside those safe rooms. In addition to a strong guarantee on privacy, we have also several advantages. First, we can integrate with existing dApps in a non-intrusive manner. Second, we can provide many privacy services. Uh, you will see that later. And third, we have great compatibility with many chains, allowing us to bring privacy to the entire Web3. And here's our approach. We are just offering privacy services as middlewares, sitting between user browsers and existing dApps on blockchains. And this design could benefit both user and developer. 
user will not feel any difference because they are given the same web interfaces. It saves time on user education. And developers don't need to redeploy their smart contract to any new platforms. This reduces the migration cost. And more exciting thing is uh, we can even provide middlewares across different chains. This is something we are exploring at the moment. And next, I will introduce some of the middleware services we are building. So Conveyor is a service that accepts transactions from users and output transactions in a determined order. This creates a front-running free zone that removes the chaos of transaction ordering and makes, and makes impossible for block producers to inject new transactions into the output or delete any transactions from the output. And now that DEX will be able to find out if the transactions is going through the conveyor and can choose to reject any unordered transactions. Uh, essentially, it disarms the block producer. They cannot manipulate the transaction order anymore. And the conveyor is running on Automata's decentralized compute plane, which provides safe rooms for the transactions and can keep everything private until the order is decided. And next is Witness. Witness is an off-chain voting service for voters who don't want to review their identities during governance, or put it simply, uh, they want to do announced voting. The workflow is very simple. For each proposal, users just send their vote to Witness, and Witness waits until the proposal is ended and then publish the result. In the result, it will not disclose voters' identity or preference. And the service is already uh, up and running, and currently is at the stage of uh, developer preview. And we've added support of many platforms such as uh, Ethereum, Finance Marching, uh, Clover Finance, and Plasma Network, and more will be added soon. And next is uh, Librarian. It's an indexing service that's not tracking users. It first aggregates and caches data from many data providers to guarantee data integrity. And then it serves all sorts of user queries without tracking them. This is based on a strong guarantee in our compute node. Anyone can verify that the code is not tracking user at all. And this service is still at early stage development and we are working with partners like Pocket Network to expand our support to more uh, substrate based chains in Polkadot ecosystem. And here's an overview of the protocol. Automata has three planes. At the core is a control plane. It is built using substrate to decentralize the entire protocol. And the second plane is a uh, compute plane where all the privacy services are running. The node at this plane is called Geode, which can be provided by any third party providers. And the last plane is uh, the service plane. It's a virtual plane that uh, we have interactions with users and other platforms. And for other service vendors, they can also choose to de develop and deploy middleware services just like us on Automata. Uh, let's now take a look uh, under the hook to see the uh, technologies in compute nodes. One of them is Trusted Execution Environment, or TEE. Uh, specifically, we are using Intel SGX to create those uh, safe rooms. They are often referred as Enclave. The other technology we are using is Oblivious RAM. It conceals access patterns from Enclave to external storage, preventing any malicious actors from inferring any sensitive data based on the access patterns they observed. OK, that's uh, everything. I or about us uh, through the following channels. And our team is still hiring. Uh, if you want to build an uh, invisibility clock inside the dark forest, please drop us a message. And thanks again for having me today. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you so much. I got a couple of questions here for you. First off, mm -hmm. um, so this is middleware. How would a parachain yeah. team or community go about integrating, say, the conveyor to protect uh, protect their chain from MEV attacks? Yeah, so just like I mentioned, uh, we will be just the middleware sitting between user browser and the uh, actually the API endpoints. So it's very uh, actually very easy for uh, for uh, those parachain developers or projects to to work with us. Um, at the moment, we can just uh, develop any kinds of middleware service inside, for example. A witness and also conveyor, but in the future we will open up this uh, ability to more developers, basically allowing them to uh, deploy their own services and just make it uh, make it just a uh, middleware for themselves. Yeah. So what about users, right? So let's imagine like a development team for whatever reason hasn't gotten around to implementing. Is there a way that a user can still route their 
uh, interactions with a, with a parachain through your system to still gain some of the benefits without before you know a parachain team gets around to, to integrating? Or is that something that has to be uh, pushed by the community on to make a parachain uh, uh, more private? Yeah, I guess it's, um, it's, it's also up to user and both the community, uh, sorry, both the project. Uh, they can, uh, for in most of the cases, for example, uh, for the uh, witness, we already supporting uh, many of the uh, project in Polkadot ecosystem through uh, EVM compatibility. And in that case, it's actually, um, if user wants, we can just directly inter integrating with uh, more platforms without actually getting some uh, support from the project. But, but actually, if we can have that, that kind of support, it's better because the integration will be much uh, smoother. Absolutely. Um, last question here. How does, so what, one of the three, uh, uh, I guess, core sort of uh, modules of your, of your network is witness. Um, someone's asking how witness solves the man in the middle problem if it does. Okay, actually, um, so it is about the, the technology we are using here. So uh, first we will have end-to-end uh, -end, um, communication channel between user browser and the enclave. So it's directly terminating inside the enclave, which is very safe. And then we use this channel to basically deliver the user's vote uh, secretly to the uh, to our uh, privacy services, uh, basically witness. Then witness will just do the processing also privately inside the enclave. And only when uh, it decides to publish the results, people can see the outcome. Awesome, thank you so, so much for joining us today.